Well, you mentioned the goals, Pablo. Absolutely correct. But also the way he's been scoring goals. He's been making these great goals, creating them out of absolutely nothing. And that's just doubly impressive. There's the whistle. This goal TV party is underway. Catalonia taking on Argentina. Argentina wearing the vertical baby blue and white stripe jerseys, the traditional colors with the black shorts. Catalonia over to Pujol, back to Valdez. This match should be fun. Enjoy the ride. Camp No Field always in perfect shape. Plenty of stars out on this play. And this Catalonia team definitely wants to give their fans a big treat. Lots of youngsters for Argentina. The midfielder, oldest players, Bolatti, just 24 years old. He's along with Pastori, who's 20, and Di Maria, also just 21 years old. So plenty of youth for the Albi Celeste. Over to Pozo. Argentina seated in Group B for the World Cup. June 12th will be the first match taking on Nigeria. First look at Pastore. Made a name for himself for Huracan in Argentina. Mistake by Bolatti. Got the Luna team offensive minded. Coached by Johan Cruyff, Lindsay, that's what we'd be expecting for them. Well, as you mentioned, uh, a number of them playing for FC Barcelona, coming up through the tradition, the system, the philosophy of playing the quality, short passing, attacking that we've enjoyed so much here on Gold TV the last few years. First foul is Gonzalo Higuain. He's 22 years old, getting knocked down. Aguero isn't on this roster. Aguero's another one of those players Maradona has used in and out of the lineup. Rumors have him possibly going either to Chelsea or Manchester City. Upwards of 60 to 65 million dollars on the table for Aguero who's not had a good season with Atletico Madrid. Pujol taking it away. And again, Barcelona captain. back to Valdez. Valdez getting a bit tricky with it and Higuain nearly jumping on that one. Over to Bruno. Lindsay, this is just a select team from Catalonia. Let's be serious. If this team were to play European World Cup qualifiers, they'd have a real shot to make it into the World Cup. Well, there's no question. The balance, the quality is there. Verdú. Looking for Boyan. Xavi. How wide. Polati running back. Boyan to Piquet. Don't expect lots of long balls from either of these two teams, Lindsay. They like to play with the ball on the ground. Almost looks like a pool game from up above. Perfect switch out wide with Bruno. Oh, what a fancy move. Garcia to the middle. Could have been one nail. Bojan Kurkic could not put it on target. Great wide ball. Garcia did the rest. Bojan could not tap it on it. Beautiful deceptive play by Garcia. Bruno plays it in square, then takes off. And look at Garcia just knocked off the defender all kinds of time. Pretty good play by Pozo to come out there and uh, block that. First corner kick of the game. PK spot over the head of PK. Lavezzi. What a good ball by Lavezzi. Just a bit too far for Higuain. Lavezzi, another one of those players, gets lost in the mix with the Abuelos, Tevez, and Messi's in the world. But any other national team, you'd almost be certain he'd be in the starting lineup. He's got a lot of quality, and one of the things he does really well, Pablo, for me, is just his ability to hold the ball under pressure. He's very good at that, does not give the ball away cheaply. 
But again, Iguain with that blazing speed with and without the ball. So there's no mystery as to why they're playing balls into spaces to him already. Iguain giving a little bit more height than the trio. Argentina used a lot during the qualifiers of Tevez, Messi, and Aguero. Argentina known for years to having that big nine since Kempes and of course Batistuta. They've been lacking that. Hopefully Iguain will be that type of player. Here comes Bojan. What a ball by Shapi to Garcia. Papa was backtracking. I think the rest of the European teams are happy, Lindsay, that Catalonia isn't an official FIFA team. The happiest, of course, being the Spain national team, since lots of their stars might be plucked away. Well, there have been some interesting opinions about Spain looking forward, of course, as the reigning European champions uh, to the World Cup. And can they produce according to their potential, which has been historically difficult for them? And some people have put it out, Pablo, whether it's right or wrong, that part of the problems with Spain in the past in World Cup performances, the fact that they have separate regions and different cultures, and they always have not gotten along on the national side at the World Cup. Now, how true that is, I'm not sure, but this is a country with such distinct cultures, and they are very different. They put it together for the Euro Cup, and Lindsay winning makes everything better and Spain has just been on a tear. They won the Euro Cup. It's a different level of intensity. The game is played also a bit different when the World Cup comes around. It's never it's not always the team that plays the prettiest that ends up winning circa Germany 2006 with Italy winning and they were not in most people's minds the best playing team. Bruno sending in the cross and Pozo makes a mess of it. Why would Busquets? Well, young defenders back there for Argentina. So good to have Di Michelis in the middle back there, the captain helping out, orchestrating, directing. Pastore, eight minutes. He's got a second touch. It's not a good sign for Argentina. They wanted to go through number 15. It's amazing. If you look at Maradona, Argentina not having that classic playmaker, that number 10, if you will. They wanted it to be Riquelme. Riquelme wanted nothing to do with the national team. They haven't really found that person. They had Pablo Aymar. Maybe he'll make his return to the national team. Messi's played good with Aymar. Many people asking for that. Maybe Pastore could be the one. Over to Iguain. Can't get there. Why? Because of that man. He doesn't get tired. Pujol wins the FIFA Club World Cup. A couple days later, still here going full speed ahead. What endurance by the Barca captain. Also haven't mentioned Angel Di Maria, Lindsay, and you like I, we see a very bright future for the Benfica winger. No question about it. I really think he could be a star at the World Cup next summer. I think uh, he is just just beginning to really develop to his potential. But you're right Pablo Argentina traditionally has had that number 10 role is somebody going to step in is that going to be a a part of this team looking at South Africa. It's a big question mark right now. And obviously it was rocky through qualifying but. As we've seen before, once you get to the finals of the World Cup, just about anything can happen. So past form doesn't count a lot, in my opinion, especially dealing with the, the talent that Argentina has to call upon here. Argentina in a very favorable group. And that's just on paper, so I have to play the games. Here comes Bruno. Worked by Volati. But Xavi picks his pocket. If you ask me what Argentina needs, they need their version of a Xavi. They have the Messi's, the Di Maria's, the Higuain's. They just need somebody to get them the ball. Here comes Bojan. Between two, Kirkic can't get there. 
Bruno. Xavi. Look at the passing by this Catalonia side. Superb. Garcia can't put a head on it. Well, we're used to seeing Captavilla at left back for Spain and for his club, Villarreal, but it looks like he's in the midfield area so far. The Napoli striker, Lavesi, with the fancy move to get around Pujol. Lavesi sends the cross to Higuain, gets the redirect to Lavatore. Actually, Pastore saved by Valdez. He's got to put more mustard on the hot dog with that shot. Way too weak, too easy. For Valdez. Levetsi deflects off the defender that time. And as you mentioned, really not enough on it, but he did keep it low, Pastore. Now, this is the play, I think, where there's a player shaken up. Of course, 2009 coming to a close. La Liga in Spain is already finished for this year. They'll start back again the first weekend in January. So make sure to tune in to Gold TV as there will be La Liga action January 2nd and 3rd. It's amazing. 2010 already. Why 2K, Lindsay? Yeah, it's a decade old. How time flies. Bruno asking for it, gets it. I think 2009 will definitely be remembered as the year of Barcelona. Won the Champions League, the King's Cup, the league title, the Super Cup, the FIFA Club World Cup. They won it all. I don't think there's been another major club in the world to win six major trophies in one year. Boyan. I think this team now is even stronger than last year's team. Ibrahimovic, his passing is an upgrade from what they had with Eto'o. Eto'o a great score, but Ibrahimovic is brilliant with the passing. Player down is Iguain into the hands of Valdez. Play on. Well, there's no question, in my opinion, that they are significantly better. You look at a young star like Boyan who's had to fight for any playing time this season because of players like Pedro who came out of the blue another youngster for Barcelona who's been outstanding and of course Ibrahimovic has fit in so well. Pastore with a good ball to Angel Di Maria first time the Benfica player gets the ball and he puts it right on a platter. What a pass and Lavezzi cannot believe it. The Napoli striker forgot to jump but what a ball by Di Maria making us look good Lindsay first touch perfect pass. Well, again, you just see he's deceptive enough. He gets a little bit of room there off Bruno. It was so well played in. Lavezzi probably couldn't believe it was that accurate. But that's one of the qualities of Di Maria is the way he can bend the ball on. He hits it with enough pace behind the defense like that. And then if you play the cross, he takes you one-on-one -on -one down the line. In case you didn't see it, search for it on the Internet. Angel Di Maria's goal for Benfica in Europa League taking on AEK Athens. The game was meaningless. Benfica had already won the group. But Di Maria scored two goals. The first, a blast from 30 yards. And the second, I'll try to describe after this play. Busquets opens it out wide. The ball crossed in. Garcia one-timer. Wide. So let me see if I can explain that goal by Angel Di Maria again. Look it up. We showed it to you live on Goal TV in Europa League. Angel Di Maria gets the pass to the middle of the box. With one move, he flicks it with a defender running on, goes between the defender's legs. Out running out comes the goalkeeper. Di Maria is left footed, but he's on the right sideline, so he does what is called the Rabona. He wraps his left leg at full speed, running towards the keeper behind his right leg, and he flicks it down low from outside the 18 between the keeper's legs, beats the defender, and the ball goes straight into the far corner. Yeah, I don't know if I described it with justice. It's even prettier than you can picture it. Amazing goal by Angel Di Maria, and that's why Argentines have high hopes for him. He was brilliant with Argentina in the Olympics. Now they see 
the youngster the 21 year old can do it in a World Cup. And as you mentioned he's with such a quality side Benfica they have acquired such very very good players for one of the reasons they're doing well in the Europa League. Pastore. Pastore with a great ball. Iguain called for an offside. I don't think so. And there, Lindsay, we're seeing the size and the skill of that young Pastore. He did a good job setting up himself to get the return pass. I don't know if we'll get the replay. Here he comes again with another nice pass. And that should be a foul. The first free kick with any kind of danger for Argentina. Somebody should tell Pastore that uh, he should be nervous playing for the Argentine national team getting called up. This hasn't phased them at all. Di Maria. PK spot. Why by the Bayern Munich defender Martin De Michelis. Well, that's two times Di Maria has crossed the ball in one of the set piece there both times they've landed right on the head of a teammate they have not been cleared again that's his accuracy you see the bend on it he hooks hooks around it. And Benfica, Lindsay. That's why another reason people are asking for Aymar to continue being called up since he plays alongside Di Maria. Well, he's definitely uh, a master of the ball and passing the ball. One of the questions is uh, consistency. In the past with him. Joe with a very rare miscue. Two thousand nine ending. We have for you the top one hundred best goals of two thousand and nine. Showing that to you Friday at seven thirty p.m. Eastern time. Log on to GoldTV.tv for all our programming, all our matches and shows. Two thousand nine is over, but you can tune in and watch the top one hundred goals of the year. We also have special Gold TV news editions where we recap month by month the entire year. 2009 soccer year in review and some amazing storylines championships by Barcelona we mentioned also tragic stories passing of some great players but the big news of 2009 also the mega mega transfer deals most of them by Real Madrid. Garcia the flag stays down. Garcia. Demi Kelly lowers his shoulder. Good no call by the referee. Well, he's played well, Sergio Garcia, of course. Don't see him in La Liga currently playing for Real Betis. Yeah, Betis relegated last season. In the last match day, they were seventh from the bottom. And all the results went completely against Real Betis. And in the final 10 minutes, they were relegated to the second division. And in a stretch of 10 minutes, Lindsay, it was amazing. We were covering it on Gold TV. Teams were going up and down, up and down. And Real Betis and poor Garcia 
couple other great players are now playing in Spain's second division. Yeah, we've had several season seasons coming down to the last match day here on Goal TV. It's been absolutely heart stopping. As the destinies go from great to disaster. Back to Xavi. Bruno. Asking for his Garcia making the run inside the 18. Bruno completely out of position, but Argentina can't catch him with a counter. Pastore back over to De Michelis. Place for Bayern Munich, another one of the leagues we show you on Gold TV, the Bundesliga. And what a turnaround for Bayern Munich towards the end of this first half of the season, Lindsay. Yeah, they went from a disastrous start to, uh, and they've won five or six straight now in all competitions. Watching the Bundesliga, remember, join Lindsay Dean for Hallo Bundesliga. This Wednesday, 7.30 p.m., in a great league that we show you on Gold TV and Allo Bundesliga. They recap the entire round, so your invitation is there as always weekly on Gold TV. Looks like Busquets that time getting tangled up a little bit. Thirty one year old Pozo with a blast. Xavi. Bruno. Xavi. Finished third in the FIFA Player of the Year voting. Messi first. Cristiano Ronaldo, runner up. That was Pastore that time doing a good job just holding the ball up until he got a little bit of help to keep possession. If he can keep doing that, he's going to work his way into this match even better. That's too bad. Good series of passes, though. Alvarez couldn't get there. Pujol to Xavi. His team looks like they've been playing together for years and for many, many games. It's only a handful of games every now and then this Catalonia side gets together, but they look smooth, Lindsay. They'll do to Boyan. Back with Verdu. Bruno. Verdu. Between three players wide with Bruno who's living in that right front position even though he's a right back. Garcia had Boyan. Argentina struggling to clear that ball away. Fast forward. Pastore to Lavesi. Lavesi's got Pastore next to him. Lavesi. Lavesi one on four. Lavesi! An amazing save by Victor Valdez. Lavesi nearly had a spectacular goal. Well, it's a great run by Levesi, but again, even more impressive, the way he stopped to create space for himself right there. He gets away from two. He gets an opening. Good save by Valdez. Maradona taking notes. Number seven's got plenty of skill. Valdez is not having it. We told you it was going to be fun. Corner kick for Argentina, their first one of the game. Cristian Alvarez with the corner. Front post. Can't get it to Martin De Michelis. Xavi. This is what the fans want. Flying down is PK. Oh, Garcia miscommunication right there. Boyan let it do the old 
ghost move. The Matador, but Garcia. Oh, yeah, he's like, my bad. Emiliano Papa. Alvarez. Just over the crossbar. Iguain. Well, this is something he's been doing for Real Madrid. His first touch is always to play it to himself again. And he does it so well here. It may be just a little bit too far ahead of him, but the, the foresight to think of that play like that. I'm going to tap it to myself in the space. And spin around. He did that exactly against Saragossa. Yes, he did. Goal. He flipped it to himself, turned, and hit this great shot. Side volley, more or less, over the goalkeeper. They're just letting Bruno do as he pleases on the right sideline. Papa backtracking. Bruno, bad ball. Otamendi. Such quick feet on La Vez. Player you know, with the most caps for Argentina, active player, Javier Sanetti. Nearly 140 caps for the team. Yeah, even though he's. Uh so to speak on the other side of the mountain in terms of his career still hard to not see him out there and not represent Argentina in the World Cup. Especially in 2006. Yeah. Not called up. Needing the 30 minute mark. Very few fouls. You know who we have not mentioned. I'm not even seen on screen. Shot taken from outside and well outside. Number five, Gago. Holding midfielder for Argentina. Well, this would be a, a match where he could try to regain his confidence. And it's been tough for him at club and country. He doesn't have many touches, that's for sure here. There's Gago right there. Finally saw him in the replay. He's asking out of Real Madrid. Saw a funny little post on a blog. And it said uh, Real Madrid purchased Ronaldo, Kaká, Benzema. Still second place. Still trailing the mighty Barcelona. Pujol. Busquets. Love how this Catalonia side plays. Bojan Kerkic, the yellow shoes, curving it in. It was looking for Xavi. Another corner kick. No, good play by that man right there, Di Michelis. He's watching it all the way, knowing that it could just slip in. Played very quickly by Kerkic. Diego Pozo hopping in the Argentine goal. He's yet to make a save. Pastore. They cut us out there again to help out. I think that was just given away by Pastore a little bit too easily for the youngster at that time. Up. 
kick. Rolling there. Good glance to Beard Fulman. Now I have a feeling if one goal goes in, this could quickly open up the floodgates, but both teams had their chances. Nothing going in yet. Xavi. Look at Xavi. The ooze and ahs of the crowd to Garcia, the step over. Here comes Catalonia. They want to get on the board first. Back over to Garcia, the Real Betis striker. Around three, chipping it back. Asking for a handball on Demichelli. He's nothing doing. Ankel Di Maria running back to help the defense. Higuain. 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 Still on his feet. Oh, Higuain, what are you doing? Well, I don't blame him totally there because he really didn't have too many options. He's running out of gas. He'd already made the run. Boyan. Bruno. Just a little bit closer together, Lavezzi and Iguain. Lavezzi moving over a little bit more when Iguain's on that side. Trying to work something together, maybe. Garcia. Such confidence with these players for Catalonia. Pablo just running off the ball all the time, knowing that they're going to get the pass. Alvarez. And the wave has found its way around the camp. No. Good pass. And push from behind by Papa. Well, that first touch just not quite where our young Boyan wanted it, but they still get the free kick here. What a pass that was. If he touches it towards goal right there, it's probably in the back of the net. And who starts it? Xavi. With a fancy footwork. This is the play before over to Garcia. Now from this distance, Pozo has got to be careful because Catalonia side's got plenty of people that can paint that post. Going to be Capdevila with the left foot, and maybe Xavi sending in a cross. Although even from that tough angle, the right-footed Xavi might go for goal. Xavi, why not? I'm just over the crossbar. You could see Puyol running in there as well, looking for any uh, scraps. What was that, about a six-foot bend? Had he been a bit further away, it would have actually helped Xavi from that angle. Capdevila. Switch by Piquet. Garcia. Is it me, Lindsay, or is Argentina getting outplayed? Here comes Catalonia again. Yalbi Celeste has lost control of the midfield. Pastore. Problem is, Lindsay, Pastore has to run so far back to get gain possession. Gago isn't helping him out there. Over to Lavesi. Lavesi. Di Maria. Look at the control against Bruno. Di Maria. Di Maria. Di Maria. Valdez. Di Maria. PK. PK. Point to the spot. It's got to be a PK. Angel Di Maria is livid. That referee blew that call. That is a penalty kick in my book. Well, what a great, great pass it was. And you mentioned that first touch from Di Maria. Valdez 
is down. Looks like a penalty to me. Looks like he hit him on the legs. Different angle here. Handful of foot. Got him on the boot. And still Popeye's got to Popeye's got to make that goal. Xavi. But that was well worked by Argentina and the, the youngster was really a big part of it. Pastore. As you mentioned he did come back deep but he ran forward. There's that pass to himself that you talked about Lindsay and Higuain then he gets fouled from behind and a good free kick coming up but what speed lots of players try it the old tapper to myself but they don't have the burst of speed to get there this man Higuain definitely does. Well he does and he does it differently at different times and again this is why I think Levetsi can get closer to him and give him an option. He's doing it all on his own right now when he gets possession. Christian Alvarez. Valdez. The chance of let's go, let's go Argentina. Valdez smiling. Alvarez crossing. Pujol clearing again with Cristian. Nine minutes to go in this first half. Pablo Alcina alongside Lindsey Dean. Argentina taking on Catalonia select side from the Camp No. Di Maria. Garcia. That's a, sorry, Pablo. That's a good play helping out back there. Is it? Uh, I'm not sure if it was Bolatti or not. Look at the flick back. Well, it just seems like every player for Catalonia knows where they're going to play the ball before they even receive it. They already know what they're going to do with it, and that's why you get these one-touch passes. The ball's moving, and it's moving quickly. And you force defensively just to react. Pujo and PK getting into the box. Xavi. I believe uh, some of the proceeds of this match are going to the Croy Foundation as well. So obviously great to see a charity involved. It was originally billed as Croy versus Maradona. Since those were going to be the managers for this game. But Maradona's suspension, that didn't happen. Two thousand and ten, right around the corner. Maybe too soon, or maybe not. The way Di Maria and Pastore are playing, but expect for Brazil twenty fourteen. Yeah, already talking about the World Cup is five years away. Think about it. Di Maria is going to be twenty six then. Pastore twenty five. Messi is only going to be about twenty seven years old. Twenty six years old. That's prime age for a World Cup. But Argentina first thinking of twenty ten. Going to need that playmaker to step up. Definitely going to need better play from their defenders. Cristian Alvarez. Alvarez. He's got a man wide open in the middle. Looking for La Vez. He can't get it to him. Di Maria. Di Maria again having words with the referee. No Christmas card for you, ref. I think that's one of the things he has to think about here is the combinations. 
who is going to read each other and work out there well in that kind of World Cup finals pressure you know. It's not always the players that get you through qualifying really. Some of them for sure but. Garcia. Qualifying is 18 games the World Cup could be only three. Argentina plays against Nigeria. Then against South Korea. And they close out the group against Greece. And as we've seen a lot of times in World Cup history when you get to those finals and you compare it to qualifying there are some players because of that long period of time who actually come of age by the time you get to the finals. Passing this Catalonia team you'd think. Good position that time by Papa. Di Maria but look how far back Di Maria is getting the ball. Pastore finally getting possession this far up front. Lavesi. Iguain, Victor Valdez again. Oh, that's better though. Lavezzi was looking for Iguain all the time. Had a good ball in. Papa, here comes Argentina. Di Maria, give and go, wants it back. Bad pass. But I have been impressed and like the physique, the vision, the passing by Pastore. What a move. Pozo backtracking. And it's a better slide by Demi Kellys. To deny Boyan. Again, that close control signature of uh, the Barcelona system. Xavi. Lavesi. Over the head of Higuain. Oh, did so well to get that ball in, didn't he? Di Maria. Bruno backtracking. Di Maria deflection. It's going to be a corner kick for Argentina. Yeah, I'd like that too. Di Maria's put on. This is a good ball by Levesi. Mm. Poor header for Iguain. You know what Maradona's saying? Palermo would have headed that in. <laughs> Read his lips and said, right to his hands. You mentioned Pastore. He's done okay. I really think he's done okay, but I think he needs to ask for the ball a little bit more. Be a little bit more aggressive, trying to get in position and get that pass so he can provide the link. At times, he's just been a little bit uh, just lackadaisical, I guess, for lack of a better description. Ball sent back inside Garcia. Goal! Goal! Just like that. Three passes, connect the dots, Santiago, Garcia, up, up, and away, the header and the goal, and Maradona sinks into his seat as Sergio Garcia sinks the Argentine manager. What a pass in, and Garcia did the rest. Well, he has really been one of the better players for this Catalonian side, Sergio Garcia. He's done a lot of work. He's made a lot of things happen. Kerkic all the way across. And I think that's uh, Verdu with a great pass in. They stretched out the defenders just enough on this play for Boyan to get across and then Garcia to go one on one. See Maradona's reaction. Oh. Well, there's a lot of Argentine fans right now probably saying same old problem. Pastore, Argentina trying to respond. The youngster Pastore to Iguain. He turns again, passing to himself. 
Oh, the scouting of Lindsey Dean. All you have to do is guard him from passing to himself. He's done it again. Three times it's worked. That time he gets fouled. Free kick for Argentina. Well, you just don't know how to defend that, really. You don't know what he's going to do. Let's see Pastore, the youngster, gets to give him a crack. I put my money on number eight, Di Maria. Normally with Messi in the game. Lionel taking this one. Angel Di Maria says, yeah, I can do it too. He's left footed. Just what you want to be from that angle. Di Maria. I hyped you up, son. You got to do better than that. Just that play again all the way across and you see just a little bit slow to get over not quite enough pressure and Verdu wastes no time Sergio Garcia is running through the middle. And that is the end of the first half 26 year old Sergio Garcia plays for Real Betis he knocks in the goal great passing all the way around by Catalonia and really. Seconds away from the start of the second half there's the whistle Argentina now attacking from your. Left to your right, the Albi Celeste two time World Cup champs trailing Catalonia select team. Sergio Garcia with the lone goal in this one alongside Lindsay Dina and Pablo Alcina. Match brought to you in 60 by 9. Otamendi comes out of the game. He's replaced by Nico Pareja. Now the back line of Argentina will be Papa, Pareja, De Michelis, and Alvarez, but we still expect more changes coming up. No changes for Catalonia, so they'll have their same 11 players. They can make up to six changes for this friendly. There's the goal scorer. Got warming up. Verdu playing up front along with Boyan. Verdu dropping back a bit more. Boyan really being the lone striker, but here comes Verdu. And of course, the other striker being Garcia. Plays for Espanol. Yeah, he started out with the Barca system at the B side. John Verdu. Pastore, why would La Vesi, Higuain, far right side? Corner kick for Argentina. What did like La Vesi in the last uh, 15 minutes of the first half? Uh, first half, excuse me, and the beginning of the second half. Just He's moving the ball and looking to play it quickly. Throwing for Argentina, the crowd not making too much noise at the moment, enjoying their team with the lead. Plenty of Argentines in attendance as well. Demi Kelly's, one of them being Diego Maradona, watching from the stands, can't be too pleased with what he's been seeing here. A couple of bright spots though, but his team trails, and even if it's a friendly, no Maradona does not. Want to lose. Cristian Alvarez. Oh, 
Alvarez. Martinez has been very weak with their set pieces. Should be a second yellow card in this game. Well, you could hear it, couldn't you? First time we see Gago on the screen, and it's not how he wants to be seen. The Real Madrid midfielder chopped down. Was it, was it, was it Gago? No ponytail anymore for Gago. Hard foul. That was Moises uh, Hurtado. On as well. Yeah. But from who he came in for, Hurtado with the yellow card. Alvarez on one side, Di Maria with the left foot. Di Maria chipping it in. Oh, good set up play, but Pujol, like always, getting a body in there. Pujol again. Mistake by Alvarez. Very few fouls in the first half. Boy seemed to be hitting a little bit more. The second 45 minutes. Back over to Pozo. You do notice in this match with these Catalonian players how quickly they get the ball down on the ground and they start playing passes on the ground. This is part of the Barcelona philosophy in a way. So it was Piquet that was taken out for number 14, Hurtado. So both teams have made one substitution. Garcia. Papa. Di Maria. Pastore. Off to the races. Iguain. Angel Di Maria. There's some good passing. The Benfica midfielder. Oh, he should have done better with that one. Di Maria can't believe it. Poor execution. Well, everything's right again. Maybe you're dead on to shoot, but you've got teammates as well. Maybe you should have just played this one to a teammate. Let's look again. He takes a look at the keeper maybe once or twice. Great pass by Iguain to Di Maria. No thinking, just boom, passing. That's what Maradona definitely wants to see. Better teamwork from the players up front. There's a strong tackle. And the Michelis goes into the books. So the Michelis with the first yellow card for Argentina. Hurtado picking up a yellow card the second half for Catalonia. Garcia. Pastore. Volati again with Pastore. Plenty of time left in this one. Lizzie, both coaches can still make five more substitutions. You're surprised that they haven't made more at the start of the second half. Yeah, just a little bit. I really am. I thought there'd be two changes apiece, maybe three. Xavi still in there, passing the ball off. Xavi just played the FIFA Club World Cup, yet 52 minutes in. He's still in there. But he's so efficient. He is one of the most efficient players in the world. And I, I, what I mean by that is just. There's no wasted energy from him. He collects, he plays, he moves to a new position, he collects, he plays. The 
31 year old Pozo at goal. Plays in Argentina for Colon. Blasted into the wall. Valdez. Got an email from Daniel Vélez asking, is Argentina at full strength? Well, this is a friendly. They're not totally at full strength. For instance, Lionel Messi's already flying back to Buenos Aires. Slightly injured, so he's taking this game off. Lots of other stars not called up as well. But Lindsay, to answer Daniel Vélez's question, this is still a legit Argentina team. There's tons of talent there. How do you think they fared? Still, well, again, you've got a lot of players missing, but. I think you've seen a, a couple of good things here that Maradona would like to see more of, and that is looking for combinations. Lavezzi, Higuain, Di Maria. Not enough, but if they can work on that, it will bring more good things for them. Back over to Valdez. Catalunya side set to make a substitution. Feel free to email your questions. Goal premium at goaltv.tv. That's G O L premium at goaltv.tv. Thoughts and comments welcomed as well. 55th minute. 1 0 Catalonia holding on. Thanks for that goal by Sergio Garcia. Boyan Kerkic. Boyan by himself between three. Goal off if he scores and he does. Goal! Boyan Kerkic. Wonder Boy is at it again. One on three and the goalie. It doesn't matter to Boyan. What a goal. Catalonia putting on a show at the camp. No. Is it Catalonia or is it Barcelona? It doesn't matter. The Cam Nou is a rock and Bojan is a scoring. Well, he hits this ball with such absolute certainty. The power and the technique, an in step drive that is nailed. It's hard to believe that he'd be on the bench with any side, even the great Barcelona. But watch this run again. That little touch there and then. The authority with which he hits that ball is impressive. It's about a 25 yard run. He's got enough energy left to pounce on it. The ball never goes further than six inches from that right foot. That's just way too beautiful. Only 19 years old, Lindsay. We've been talking about this kid forever. He's still only 19, he's still a teenager. Paul John. Makes it 2-0 for Catalonia. And Xavi has been taken out of the game. Sergio Gonzalez checked in. The player with the most caps for this Catalonia team. Making his 13th appearance. Blistering shot, wasn't it? I mean, he just and it keeps it low and where he wanted to put it. It was intended there between four players, but again, the Argentine weakness, their back line. They keep trying different formulas, trying to piece together a puzzle, but it's a puzzle with plenty of holes. And South Africa is only six months away, and I don't think any player. Is cemented as a starter in the four-man back line for Argentina. Well, that's definitely was one of the question marks that everyone uh, was talking about through World and Cup another qualifying. Another mistake, and here comes Catalonia again. Boyan, the yellow shoes fly. Kirkich, and it's a save by Pozo. Turn on the lights and go home. If Boyan would have knocked that one in there, good work by the 31-year-old keeper. Boyan, maybe. Tapped it a bit too far to knock it in there. Catalonia is putting on a show. Iguain, let's go back the other way. The Argentine 2 1. No. Knocked wide. I think Oleguer, was it Oleguer that just got a piece of that? It was. The veteran comes back and just gets a little slice of the ball, or it would have been maybe 2 to 1. Good pass to Iguain. Corner kick for Argentina. 
Albi Celeste trying to get back into this game. Still plenty of time left. Ball sent across. Nothing doing. Higuain has had his chances to score. Had a header in the first half. Had a shot in the first half that went 10 yards too high. And then there, Oleguer from behind, knocking it wide for a corner. Verdu to Bojan. Well, you're correct, Pablo. Is there was just too much room. Di Michelis there in the end, backing in. But by then, there were two to three Argentine players who never responded quickly enough. Once a player runs in like that, you have to try to get goal side and force him to slow down, to cut the ball back, or to move to the outside. What a great camera angle. He touched the ball seven times inside the 18 alone. Tapping it, tapping it, tapping it, tapping it. Not an Argentine player in sight. And he finally put it away. Here comes Papa. I think that's Di Maria into the hands of Valdez. Oh, this could get ugly. Here comes Catalunya with plenty of space. It's Verdu. Bojan waiting for the run to Bojan. Kirkic. One on three again. Bojan. Finally, somebody puts in a leg. It's Martin De Michelis. Argentina really stretched out here the last minute and a half. Big gap on the midfield. Look at that. Oh. It's a shame that he plays for Barcelona, as in he doesn't get all the playing time, but how much is he learning from playing with the likes of Messi's, the Xavi's? Whistle had already blown. Even veterans like Henri and now Ibrahimovic. And Boyan, to his credit, hasn't talked much, Lindsay. He's part of the team. He grew up with Barcelona. He's really paid his dues, paid his time. But when he plays, man, he is just amazing to watch. Higuain, the green shoes. Higuain, the step over. Higuain. Well, it's going to be interesting in this second part of the season for Barcelona whether Pep Guardiola is able to use Kirkic more because when you see an electrifying goal like that even though you have legendary players like Henri on your squad you have to say let's find some time for this young talent. Then you also have Pedro, then you also have Jeffren, and then you also have, yeah. and the list keeps on and on and on. And unlike Real Madrid that spends a fortune, Barcelona. From within, from within. Pedro. Papa comes out, did not like the match by number three. Papa, replaced by number 11. Jesus Datalo. Datalo is in. Argentina getting more offensive minded. For Catalonia. Pujol is out. Yeah, it's Oscar Serrano coming on. Midfield player for uh, Racing Santander. Here comes Argentina to Pastore. Knocked it wide to Iguain who can control. I guess if I had to say one thing about Argentina to this part of the match is just the lack of continuity out there. Di Maria, best player for Argentina in the first half. Drops it back, Pastore. Draws it back again. Pastore one time for Golazo. No! Pastore! We mentioned him. Talent. Size. And there you just saw the power. Just 20 years old. Plays for Palermo. And he flat out unleashed the laser. Argentina is back in the game. Pastore, the promise, becomes present time with that blast right there. Well, it's funny, I mentioned continuity, but this, again, was a good combination. What did we say about Argentine players playing it to themselves? Di Maria plays it square. Pastore pops it up to himself. 
It hits a beautiful volley. Really, what a nice goal that was. And Datilo just came on and he placed the ball to his teammate for the goal. That was much better though. Again, Di Maria started out instead of just taking it and crossing it, he placed a simple square pass, another square pass, and a goal. We said at the beginning, we expect this game to be fun. And well, it has not disappointed. Fun it is. Two goals to one. Argentina wants to tie it up. Here comes Datolo. Datolo has Di Maria. That he holds it, brings it back. Good work all the way around, but finally no teammate opened up. Great idea though. Great work by Datolo. Again, an immediate impact since he came on, Pablo. He was on only maybe for a minute or less. And you've got to say the legend's got to sit forward and take notice of that because this is really what they were lacking for most of the match. If you look at their attacking play, two short passes, tremendous goal, really. Well, in the first half, two names who kept coming up Di Maria and Pastore, with Di Maria being a bit better. And in the second half, again, it's Di Maria and Pastore with a missing ingredient being maybe Datola. We're saying we need a well, player to piece it all together and so far it's number 11 at least a stretch of two minutes definitely a big difference for me since he came on a balloon getting the best seat in the house parking itself right in the center and finally gets popped you just noticed with that to low again holding the ball Looking for teammates to get in position, that composure under pressure. This might be Banega. But first, Catalonia with a substitution. And Bojan getting a well deserved ovation. He did take a knock right after that goal. What a performance. with a nice chest pass. There's a foul from behind. Yeah, it's Ferran Corominas coming on for Boyan. That was Pastore again. And that's okay for me. Uh, he's under pressure. He's got his sole of his boot on the ball. He's trying to hold and look for passing lanes to open up. So Iguain, a Real Madrid player, getting a little Real Madrid greeting. It's whistled out. And 19, Palermo comes in. Argentina is in South Africa 2010. Partly because of the huge goal scored by Palermo in the World Cup qualifier against Peru. Peru tied the game late 1-1 in a severe rain downpour in Argentina. With just seconds left, Palermo again with that huge goal gave Argentina the three points. And then eventually with the win in Uruguay at Argentina in the World Cup. Well, if I'm making a list, Merodono, his assistants, whomever I'm going to put on the list of objectives or things to work on again combination play with Iguain something to try to work on and at the top of the list what am I going to do with my back line am I playing just three am I playing four and if I'm if I'm playing four which four are they here comes Di Maria I think he's really got to think about playing four. I really do. Coro getting stepped down by Datolo. Sergio. Look at that pass. Over to Pastore. Pastore by himself. Pastore. Pastore. Pastore between two. Can't quite split the defense. 
You see from up above with his long stride and his black hair why they call him the Argentine Kakai. Here comes Kodo. Kodo, he that's not called. And now he did. I think the referee's assistant told him and yeah. Well, that's kind of mysterious for me. This angle looked like it was a PK. Looks in or down. Yeah, he's got his knee up in him. I don't think there's any doubt about that. But I will say earlier on, again, Di Maria. Clearly for me, there was contact from Victor Valdez. And it is a penalty kick. The referee at first glance said no, play on. I think the referee's assistant said no, that's a PK. Well, Poso, see if you can keep Argentina in the game. I think that Sergio, who uh, hardly ever misses on penalties, we'll see. Sergio Gonzalez, Catalunya takes a 3 1 lead. Absolutely no doubt about that one. Wink, a smile. Sergio knocking it in, and it's 3 1. Argentina fought back into the game, and Sergio from 12 paces gives the home side a two goal lead again. The most caps ever for this Catalonia select team making his 13th appearance far and away the most by anyone and he taps in the PK. Of course he played for Espanol and over 280 appearances for Deportivo and always known as a player that doesn't miss penalties and very good on the set pieces. No doubt about that one 20 minutes to go. Another mistake in the back Lindsay. We saw a mistake in the first goal by Sergio Garcia, then a mistake there. Foul, which leads to the PK. Back line of Argentina was embarrassed by Bojan. Bojan easily dancing around four players. In Argentina, you've got to fix your back line. Pastore trying to find Bolatti. Against Argentina again, ball wide. Di Maria, the goal. Goal! Angel Di Maria, the Benfica midfielder. He came to play. He's missed twice, not a third. Di Maria knocks it in there, and it's Pastore and Di Maria, the only two players that are really standing out, the only two players to find the back of the net. Argentina is back in this one. Oh, the last 19 minutes are going to be exciting and fun, and Di Maria gets the pass from Lavezzi and does the rest. Good pass by Lavezzi that time. Very quickly gets rid of it just in time. Di Maria, this time he's not wide. One of the things I love about this player, he keeps it low. He drives it into the far corner. If you're going to miss, don't miss high. And that time he doesn't miss at all. Also have to mention Lavesi, like the way he's played. Well, Maradona has seen some things he likes, some things. Not so much, but definitely on the like side is the play of the 21 year old Di Maria and the 20 year old Pastore. And also, the also young Lavesi, only 24 years old. Here comes Pastore. Nice slide tackle by Hurtado. He's got to be careful, he's got a yellow card. I think some of the problems in the back are let's just say correctable again position issues but there's no doubt about it they have to focus on being consistent in the back as uh, Garcia comes off for Fernando Navarro 
Garcia scored the first goal of the game. Again, they can make six substitutions plus change their goalies. Getting a couple of emails. Lindsay to Gold Premium at GoldTV.tv asking about is this Catalonia team the same as the Spain national team or is the Spain national team using this Catalonia side to send, see some of their players? That is not the case at all. We'll explain exactly the situation after this play. And Lindsay, please answer the question. Explain to viewers just tuning in what exactly this Catalonia side is. Well, Catalonia is one of the autonomous regions of Spain. And uh, they've kept their culture, their language, their uh, history alive. And this is uh, the Catalonian region national team. If you want to call it a region, which is definitely not the same as the Spanish national team. Sort of like if you took a, a region of the United States, maybe for an example, New England, six states and put together an all star team. Well, they don't represent the United States, they represent New England, something analogous to that. FIFA does not recognize Catalonia as a team. They've tried for decades and for years, have not been able to well I encourage anybody out there who has not read about the, the way that uh, these autonomous regions are set up in Spain to just go online and start reading about them because it's a fascinating history whether it's Andalusia Catalonia Galicia as I mentioned Basque country ball well, sent in had a goal what a ball in and Catalonia is just having their way with the back line of Argentina. Another header, and it's all Catalonia. These are players get together for these matches, and it's Moises Hurtado that knocks it in there. But Lindsay, they look like they've been playing for years, and the Argentina back line looks simply lost. Too easy for Hurtado, and again, it's a two-goal lead for Catalonia. It definitely was too easy. Moises Hurtado. We'll wait for the replay. Here it is. I think that's a Verdu again who serves in a nice ball. But where was the defense? Come on, let's be fair. He's wide open. The player is behind him. I think actually it's Di Michelis that ends up behind him. Oh, he just falls asleep right there. He's trying to direct traffic and he forgets about his own man. It's almost like he had them together for two years, isn't it? Well, it was nil-nil for a while. We said one goal and trust us, the floodgates would open. That's exactly what has happened here. Again, to finish up that Catalonia explanation, an email from Mohammed asking why are Spain national players allowed to also play for Catalonia? Well, the players that play for Catalonia, such as, let's say, Carles Puyol, that plays also for Spain national team, they were born in this region. However, FIFA does not recognize Catalonia as a national side, which is why they play for their national team of Spain. And these, for all intents and purposes, are just friendlies. They've been playing friendlies for a long time. But again, this is not an official FIFA team, which is why they can also play for the Spain national team. Same situation for the uh, Basque side. They have a select team or. I don't think there's a big surprise that we've had six goals in the match pop that we knew this was going to be free flowing to a degree anyway but. Didn't make six substitutions and the goalie so Victor Valdez is out a couple of great saves by Valdez. Can't blame him for the goals by Pastore. So Codina is in. Salvio in for Argentina. Eduardo Salvio, just 19 years old, plays for Lanús. Got away from Pastore.
first international match for the Catalonia team was back in 1912. Lost that opening match to France. Again, they've been playing since 1912, their last match before this one. They played friendly against Colombia in 2008. Again, in 2009, this is their only match, Lindsay, and they look like they are a well-oiled machine. Here comes Pastore. Argentina trying to creep back into this one, trying to save face. Di Maria. Nice chest control. Salvio to the middle. Bad pass. Johan Cruyff on November of 2009 was named coach of this team. definitely has not just been the Barcelona players that have shined in this match right I mean look at the goal Sergio Garcia Hurtado. Hurtado. Boyan. pretty so on the goals but defending is atrocious by Argentina not getting the handball there That's one of the few times that we've seen a player from this Catalonia side step on the ball and then lift it in the air because it's a it's a nice little ball trick. They have this teaching this philosophy of being just efficient. And the ball is on the ground and it's mostly short passes and then maybe one or two long passes in the air. In the first half, very few fouls, very few goals. Second half, tons of goals, lots of fouls. Argentina only four fouls in the first half. They've committed 11 in the second half. Pastore out on the wing. For nine to go. Volati, probably only the third ball he's touched all game long. Jesus Datoro to the middle. Nice give and go. Di Maria gets brought down. Good combination again. Now he's going to get a yellow for this. But once again, Dacolo Pablo is a creator kind of guy out there for them. And ever since he's come on, they're getting more of these short passes, these combinations going. That's the good thing. Too many yeah, is. Not getting any of the calls. Now he started going down before getting touched. Referee got that one right. I came up. I don't know. Looks like he danced around it just right. Yeah, he's a dangerous player, Oscar Serrano. We've seen him score quite a few goals in the last 10 minutes for his club side. Crossing Santander, even though they've struggled uh, for the most part this season. Manega, who checked in. Look at the ball possession percentage. Catalunya ahead. Pastore drops it back. On. There's a very strong tackle. Salvia. Pareja. Yeah, you're right. All the leagues taking breaks for the end of the year. But we'll be back early as La Liga. Next round, round 16, getting underway 
first weekend in January. So enjoy your new year and then make yourself comfortable. So we're back with more La Liga action. Weekend of January 2nd. Catalonia team celebrating. They beat Colombia 2-1 to one in their last match. The match before that, they lost to Argentina 1-0. Now that Argentina team was filled with lots of players for Argentina's Olympic roster. And Argentina came out on top 1-0. Catalonia getting some revenge. Fouls is mounting up on Argentina. Salvio gets whistled for the foul. Big plans for the New Year's, Lindsay? Not for me. Just looking forward to La Liga, Bundesliga uh, in 2010. Colombian football. What New Year's resolutions do you give to Maradona and this Argentine national team? crossed in looking for Palermo Palermo since he's checked in it's not received one ball he's great in the air you can't do much if you don't find them it's still an ongoing process again for me for Argentina with all the talent is to find that uh, that balance that they're searching for Serrano cross it to the middle. Volati to Pozo. A player like Gago, Lindsay, he's getting no playing time with Real Madrid, and you're seeing how it's affecting him with the national team. Dramatically, isn't it? Dramatic. He was pretty invisible. His confidence looked pretty shot. But if he still doesn't play, if he doesn't get transferred elsewhere, if you're Maradona, do you have the confidence in putting him in into a World Cup situation when you're not playing for your team? I don't know. I mean, that's a that is a very very tough decision there. So you see players like even Donovan, David Beckham, just keep it here. Players from Major League Soccer wanting to play in England, wanting to play in Italy. Ball chipped in and wide to be able to keep getting playing time and. David Beckham, Fabio Capello just flat out told him, if you don't play, I'm not calling you up. And I think Maradona needs to maybe think about doing something like that. These players not playing, you can't bring them in cold. No, there's just, just too much of a slip in form to do that. Six months away, Jan June 12th, Argentina's first match in the World Cup, taking on Nigeria. Well, I do remember one thing that might provide some solos to our Argentine fans. I just remember before the World Cup in 2006, how poor Germany, the host country, looked. I mean, they looked terrible. It was February. I think we did an exhibition uh, exhibition match here on Gold TV. We're talking about. It was the poorest performance by a German side we've ever seen. And as we all remember, things turned around a lot when the World Cup actually began. So. Let's see if Argentina can get one more. Long range and just a bit outside. Yeah, now Vetsy's played well. Now there's something positive to talk about right there. 
Navetsi. The last part of the first half and most of the second half has been effective. Back to your point on Germany, though. You can play bad and still win if your defense is at least solid. Italy wasn't great, but their defense was solid. Germany wasn't great, but they were good defensively. My fear with Argentina and being of Argentines is that problem. But remember, the German defenders were very young at the time. I mean, Murtazaka was back there. All draw back. Argentina trying to close out Di Maria. Nothing doing. Back over to Codina with the clear. Continue, Lindsay. But the question is, I think for me, is does Maradona have a system where these players can fit in? Because it seems, in qualifying at least, looking back, that it was so disjointed at times, and they got the results because they have great players. Barely got the result. Argentina qualifying fourth, last of the direct berth into South Africa from South America. But again, putting that in context, you know, it's, in my opinion, the toughest place to qualify for the World Cup anywhere on the planet. Through ball. Di Maria. Di Maria trying to do the old figure eight. Wins it over to Jesus Datolo. Ball sent in and some wow how that is wide. It's been that type of a day and yeah Maradona all you can do is laugh and it's Lavesi again and oh he's had tired conversations with himself about the goals he's missed on the day. Lindsay ended up being a fun match. Your closing thoughts on what you saw here from Catalonia and Argentina. Just saw some great goals and uh, well maybe some disappointing play from the Argentine players. But again there were some bright spots out there I think too. Especially bright spots on this home team Catalonia not recognized by FIFA but boy they gave their region. Lots of reasons to be proud. This is Datolo with a blast. It's Bruno controlling. Fans on the feet. They want one more. Serrano. All right, just one touch got away from him a little bit there. Yeah, the bad hop, wasn't it? Hard to believe on that surface. Must have hit the one pebble in all of the camp. No pitch. Of course, we invite you to stay with Gold TV the rest of the week. And through the New Year's, we have special editions of Gold TV News and the top 100 goals of the week to see all our programming. www.goldtv.tv. Here comes Serrano again. Fans, they're greedy. They won five on the two time World Cup champs. Verdu. And that is it. Catalonia beats Argentina four goals to two. Boyan Kirkic scoring a magnificent goal. And the home team gets goals from Sergio Garcia, Bojan, the other Sergio on a penalty kick.